Well hello and welcome to this week's video and something a little bit different for you this week. Today I'm going to be taking you on a little tour around the Museum of Flight in Seattle and aside from that I went on a little bit of a wander around Boeing Field in Seattle and found something that was really interesting. You'll see later in the video but watch the video and I hope you enjoy it. Let's head to Seattle and take a walk around the Museum of Flight first and then go and see some 737s in a car park. Let's go. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Well, this is a convenient thing to do for a few hours, isn't it? Just on the other side of the airport, the Museum of Flight. I've been wanting to come here for absolutely years. Wasn't expected to be here today, but with this delay, well, I might as well come and check it out. The Museum of Flight in Seattle is at Boeing Field, about a 15 minute drive from Seattle to Tacoma, Seattle's main international airport. My flight had suffered a five hour delay out of Seattle, so this seemed like a great place to come and pass some time. This 737 was retired by US Airways in 1995 after flying since 1969. I can't believe it's actually taken me this long to get to the Museum of Flight here in Seattle. This place is incredible. I've always kind of dismissed it as a bit kind of too geeky, but it really isn't. It's a really good museum and they've got some incredible artifacts in here, some amazing aircraft. There's an SR-71 Blackbird over there. Like, and it's such a mix as well, it's not just military stuff like a lot of museums are, there's loads of civil stuff. There's some of the really historic old planes, there's a 737 over there. Or the nose of a 737. I so need one of these things, look at this flying car. Good lord. <laughs> the Taylor Aero car from 1968. <laughs> like years ago people thought these would be the future of flight. I mean who knew that the future of flight instead was sitting on a Ryanair or a Spirit plane crammed in for two hours when this was how the future was envisaged not so long ago. <laughs> Can we bring them back? And where else in the world can you get this close to an SR-71 Blackbird? Whoa, incredible, look at this thing. So here's where there's some really good stuff. Hey, look at that, there's a Concorde. Amazing. Let's go and have a look where you can get on board. Wow. So you can actually come and get on board Concorde. Wow, let's go and have a look. This Concorde's on loan to the museum from British Airways and it's one of four on display outside of Europe. The British Airways one as well, how cool. There's not much room on the old Concorde, is there? Not even flatbeds. <laughs> I guess for a three hour flight from London to New York, you didn't need it. And those tiny windows really aren't designed for GoPros, are they? To be attached to. <laughs> Think of the people who have um, stepped foot on this plane there. Think of the people who have been to this bathroom. <laughs> Celebrities, kings, world leaders. Not much room to do your um, toilet review though, is it? and an old 707 Air Force One here, wow. And you can get on board this one as well, let's go and have a look. How often can you say you've been on an Air Force One? It'd be a great one to do a trip report on. Oh, 
this is the presidential toilet. Wow. The presidential toilet. It's even got windows. Very nice. He's left some toilet roll as well. Very thoughtful of him. Interesting they had flat screen TVs back in the 1960s as well. Very ahead of their years, these presidential lot. Uh, of course he's got a coach class section where the um, self-loading freight goes on at the back. You know, if I had an Air Force One of my own, I think I'd do the same thing, you know, I'd have the big presidential room and bedroom and everything at the front and then back here, the rest of the family, the kids could come back here. <sighs> nice and quiet. The 727 never got to ride one of these. This Boeing 727 was the original prototype of the 727 and it was the first 727 ever built. It first flew in 1963 and was delivered to United Airlines in 1964 before being retired in the 1990s and restored over many years by the Museum of Flight. The old United Airlines upholstery on the seats always reminds me of the National Express upholstery on board the coaches from back in the 1970s and 80s. If I was an aviation YouTuber in 1971, I think I'd be dressed like this too. Tally here, welcome to this trip report on this United 727. Well, there it is, the queen of the skies, the 747. It's the very first one. Incredible, I can't wait to go and have a look at that in a minute, actually. This museum is incredible. It's a long way up. Good Lord, how big these things are when they're not crammed full of seas. Wow. It's a Boeing A380. It really is incredible to be able to walk through such a famous historical aircraft and also to see what these test aircraft are like inside. Wow, this place is, this thing is incredible. A 747MT, jeez Louise. Often this equipment that they also used to test it when it was being designed. This aircraft was a prototype 747 and the one that launched the entire 747 program. I think they found a real life 737 MAX engineer. He's looking pretty confused. Nice leg room. It's not a bad place to spend a few hours, is it? Now here's a random fact for you. This aircraft here is the Antonov An-2 and if you have a private pilot's license in Europe, for a single engine fixed wing type, so that is basically your Cessnas and your Pipers and things. This is the biggest aircraft type that you can fly on a private pilot's license with no additional ratings. How cool is that? It would be amazing to have flown one of these when I had my license years ago. Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace make it super easy to set up and host a website. 
This isn't like the old days of the internet where GeoCities gave you a simple website that you've filled with animated GIFs, Squarespace really do have this nailed. Squarespace can handle it all from the domain name to your design to the hosting, social media links, optimize your SEO, search engine optimization, and build in an online storefront, you know, for selling really cool merch in. Best part is Squarespace are offering you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain by visiting squarespace.com slash Phillips and using coupon code Noel Phillips. So what do we have here? So here's just some of the Boeing 737 MAX 8 aircraft that Boeing have got parked up at the moment. They're brand new, just been built and all stood here waiting for whatever fix they need to be able to actually take to the skies. Another one over here, look, nineair.com, Chinese, nineair.com, Chinese airline. Good Lord, so over there is the employee parking lot of Boeing. I've heard about this place, look at that. It's the employee car park and it's absolutely rammed full of 737 MAX aircraft. Jesus Christ, there's dozens of them. What? Let's go and see if we can take a closer look at these. Jeez Louise, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I've lost count. There's like at least 30 odd 737s parked over there. Good Lord. Boeing have built over 400 737 MAX aircraft that haven't even been delivered yet and they're stored all around the US. It does feel pretty sad seeing so many aircraft parked up like this, just brand new and waiting to be delivered. I mean what airlines have we got? Let's have a look. Sunwing, Iceland Air, TUI, loads of them, China Southern, Air Canada, Turkish, they've got loads over there as well. Wow, just look at that lot. Incredible, this, oh wow. Fly Dubai, boo. Good Lord, I'd seen pictures of it on the internet, but just looking at it up close, it's incredible, wow. All of these planes parked up are waiting software updates when they've actually fixed them so that they can actually finally get delivered to their airlines after the issues that they've had with the MAX. I mean, just imagine the chaos this is causing for Boeing at the moment. Unbelievable. So there we have it, the Museum of Flight, and how crazy is that all of those 737 MAX 8s? just parked up in a car park in Seattle, absolutely unreal. Um, and we thought that the Max 8 issue was the biggest aviation thing to happen in a generation. And then here we are sitting with the current issues that are going on around the world and it just all kind of, it's crazy, absolutely crazy. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think to it. And more importantly, let me know your favorite aircraft out of all the ones that you've seen at the Museum of Flight. Um, let me know which one's your favorite down in the comments below. Normal service resumes next week with my next flight video. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time.